So you've been watching all of these YouTube videos telling you about how Portugal is this incredible place that is super cheap and a complete paradise. And then you arrive here and go, what have I gotten conned into? The buildings are poorly maintained, the customer service is terrible, and the beaches are really nice, but way too cold to swim in. Yada, yada, yada. I think that Americans in general tend to favor the newest next best thing. Things that are older tend to be looked at as worn out or not of use anymore. And in Europe, everything is old, very old. A lot of my friends come to visit here and criticize Portugal for not having as much to offer as Spain or Italy. And usually this really annoys me, but I guess I can't blame them entirely. It's like a lot of Americans just want a tourist service to package Portugal uh, on a golden platter and serve it to you with a silver spoon. But to be fair, this is exactly what places like Paris and Rome do. They put a lot of money into marketing their tourism. But Portugal has been a little bit behind in this, and it isn't some Disneyland, but that's what makes it special to me. You have to work a little bit harder to find the hidden gems, and that's the best part. Portugal is kind of like Western Europe's underdog having a renaissance. Now, it hasn't been a secret to the rest of Western Europe as many people from uh, Germany and Netherlands and obviously the UK have been coming to Portugal for a very long time to vacation. But my goal with this video is to hopefully give a reality check to Americans considering a move to Portugal and if I can successfully eliminate the low-hanging fruit from this list, then you can buy me a Sagres or Superbach when you see me. I'm not picky. People in Portugal think that I am crazy when I have these new ideas about business opportunities or business ideas that I have. I often get this response that's, wow, you are such a dreamer. How optimistic of you, you are so American. And when I think about that, I don't think of uh, optimism and uh, this kind of idea of entrepreneurship and go-getter attitude as being so American as many of my friends in the United States aren't like this and are totally happy you know, working the same job every single day. Uh, but the characteristic of DIY and do it yourself and get up and do it has always been integrated in me since I was you know, a young kid. But in Portugal, doing things that haven't been done before seemed like a concept from outer space. And this can be frustrating sometimes because a lot of the times the first answer is no, it's not possible. And then you keep prying and prying and prodding until you can get them to kind of say yes and they can see that it is in fact possible. However, the downside of the yes man in the United States obviously is a problem when you get a project rolling and don't know about the problems until later. Now, it surprises me every day how well uh, people in Portugal speak English. Most people in Portugal speak a little bit of English and it's pretty easy to get by speaking English. But let me tell you, if you can speak Portuguese, it will make an immensely dramatic difference to your experience here in Portugal. Portuguese can be extremely hard to understand if you come from America and you are used to hearing Mexican Spanish. It almost sounds like people in Portugal are speaking Russian when you first hear it because it's much more monotone and spoken much more flat. Uh, as Portuguese people say that Brazilians sound like they're singing Portuguese, uh, Portuguese people are much more monotone. Uh, bom dia, uh, como estás? Uh, it's just much more flatlined and it seems a little bit more uh, emotionless. But there are many different types of Portuguese spoken within Portugal. Uh, it differs from the north to the south and even the central, um, and nobody can understand what the people of Azores are talking about. But if you plan on making a move to Portugal, I do think that learning Portuguese is essential. If you're interested in learning Portuguese through the Portuguese masterclass that I use, there is a link in the description below. I have definitely come to find that in Portugal, people are brutally honest and direct. Now, in contrast to the people in the United States that kind of have this fake niceness and are afraid to hurt people's feelings, this can come off a bit 
rigid and maybe even a bit disrespectful. I think Portuguese people will tell you exactly how they're feeling and when they're feeling it. Now I've come to really enjoy this because you're not getting hit with this passive aggressiveness. You know whether someone likes you or not or whether they like something that uh, you're doing. I think that it's a great way to gain honest feedback and also build trust with uh, the people you're meeting and the people around you. But this can definitely be a bit jarring to Americans and maybe they don't feel so comfortable and at home by how direct and brutally honest people are here. Let's face it, making a month-long scouting trip uh, to Portugal is very difficult unless you're retired or have tons of money. So when Americans come to Portugal, it can be pretty hectic and a bit chaotic. When you can't speak the language or know the areas and you look like a foreigner, a lot of people may try to take advantage of you. Or you may get paranoid and think you're being taken advantage of. Typically, it all begins doom scrolling through Idealista, which is the Zillow of Portugal and Spain. However, I haven't had very much luck on this site and I've had a couple of horror stories. When I first was in the United States, I was very interested in checking out a house and I reached out to an agent to ask some questions about the house. She responded to me that evening and told me that she would get back to me in the morning uh, when she gets into work. Then in the morning, I received an email from a person that worked at the exact same store and I assumed that they were a part of a team. So he began answering my questions about the house and everything was going very good and we were going to schedule a visit for when I was back in Portugal. But then about three days later, yes, three days later, the original agent reached out to me in a scouring email that basically was berating me, telling me that I don't, uh, understand anything about Portuguese culture, how dare I talk to her colleague, and that there's no way that I was going to be able to buy this house and she would do anything in her power to prevent that. Now, it is beyond my comprehension why someone in the day of the internet and Google uh, would do something like this. With reviews and everything, uh, it's very hard to get away from treating you know, clients and potential future customers like this. And the experience was so bad that uh, I even ended up buying the house that I'm in now without a real estate agent, uh, just with a lawyer, and I uh, did the deal uh, with the previous homeowner, Mano e Mano. Now that's not to say there aren't some amazing real estate agents here in Portugal, but you need to make damn sure that they are good. After contacting the agency or person, now comes the fun part of seeing if the house is actually what it's advertised as. Now the first house that I went to visit in Portugal, something very interesting happened. I walked into the house and noticed that it was nothing like the photos at all. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I went into the bathroom and it was completely different. In the pictures, it was this beautiful modern bathroom with a brand new sink installed and a tub and a beautiful shower with brand new tiles and a glass, um, a glass wall. And when I went to see the house, uh, it was this old decrepit bathroom where things were falling apart. It looked nothing like it. So what had happened was is one thing you see in Portugal that is quite common is you'll see 3D rendered uh, projects or of rooms of what it could be uh, if you remodeled it yourself. They do this here a lot with bathrooms and backyards and bedrooms and if a ruin, which is a house that is just literally a uh, stone and falling apart, sometimes they'll make renders of the whole entire house all made brand new. And these renders are really good and sometimes look very realistic. One of the first things that you wanna check out in a Portuguese home is the moisture. Uh, so typically one of the biggest problems um, that's a cancer in masonry here in Portugal is salitre. In English, this is saltpeter or potassium nitrate. Now this stuff grows into the walls and peels your plaster and your paint. And based on a lot of the groups and people that I talk to here in Portugal, this seems to be one of the f 
biggest fighting problems that homeowners have here in Portugal when buying a home. Now this typically happens in older builds and older homes, but I've seen them in modern structures, in modern houses, and even malls and coffee shops and stuff like that. So it really depends on how the house is built, but it does seem like moisture is one of the biggest problems here in Portugal. This is not the Mediterranean or the waters off of Mexico. Portugal's Atlantic coast is very cold. Now, I'm from the Great Lakes in Michigan, and I grew up swimming in Lake Tahoe, so I am no stranger to very, very frigid waters. But these oceans are definitely very cold, and you definitely need a wetsuit uh, when surfing or swimming in them for long periods of time. And if the cold water isn't enough to keep you out of the water, the waters off Portugal's coast are extremely dangerous. And I'm talking about some of the biggest waves in the entire world. The small fisherman village of Nazaré is home to some of the biggest waves ever surfed. And the fishermen that have been going out to these waters for centuries have some seriously big cojones and are viewed as gods of the water. These dangerous coasts are typically above Lisbon. You can still find some calmer waters and much nicer beaches below Lisbon and into the Algarve. Compared to other Western European countries like Germany, France, the Netherlands, um, even Spain, uh, Portugal is not a very bike friendly country. Now there are some great bike trails if you are close to the ocean or the rivers here, uh, but for the most part in a lot of the cities and villages, it is very unsafe and I feel pretty uncomfortable riding a bike in these areas. Just recently the other day, a biker got hit in my village and uh, thank goodness I didn't see them, but it was a very bad accident and it was a big commotion in the village and I do think that riding a bike in Portugal uh, can be pretty dangerous with the style of driving here. Not to mention trying to ride your bike on the cobblestones on the steep hills in Lisbon and Porto does not sound like a great and fun idea. However, I do think an electric bike with off-road fat tires may be a great option and I will be doing a video on this very soon, so stay tuned. And this also goes for other forms of transportation as well. Now, in other parts of Western Europe as well, there are incredible interconnected train lines. Portugal is a bit behind on that, and although they've said they've been building these train lines for decades now, uh, it hasn't really been moving too fast. You do see them building it on the side of the road, but it should have been done quite a long time ago, and they've been saying that there's been progress that's been happening, but it has been moving very, very slow. Portugal is different from a place like Germany where even in smaller villages in Germany, you'll be able to get a bus or a small train line anywhere uh, in Germany. And many places uh, in Portugal are unreachable uh, without a car. So it's very important to keep in consideration in Portugal that if you want to be connected to a transportation system, you will have to be in a bigger city. But I am crossing my fingers that there will soon be a high-speed train line between Lisbon and Madrid. Graffiti is everywhere. And I'm not talking about beautiful murals by incredible renowned street artists. I'm talking about scribbles that look like they were done by your 12 year old brother. All around Portugal, you will see these cursive scribbles that are just god awful. A lot of times they are on houses and businesses and even when you go out into the rural land, you will see people uh, tagging all over uh, rural structures and it's just everywhere. Now there is some amazing street art murals and really amazing pieces, but there is a lot of shite as well. And it is pretty annoying um, and just looks pretty ter terrible. This is the one that drives Americans absolutely crazy. Now, professionalism is not what it is in Portugal as it is in the United States. I can't tell you how many times I have 
called a company and they have come and given me a quote and I said, okay, let's get the job started and never heard from them again. I think one of the problems that happens here in Portugal is that people take on too much business and don't know how to manage it properly. And management in general seems to be a bit of a problem here in Portugal as uh, it seems like some people don't know the correct policies and procedures of their job a lot of the times in the state buildings or uh, even in a lot of uh, bigger businesses. I think a big part contributing to this is that there are about five companies that pretty much have a monopoly and own everything in Portugal. And then there's a bunch of smaller mom and pop shops that do a really good quality job for everything. And these are the companies that you want to support as much as you possibly can. But the mid grade uh, doesn't exist as much. So there's not as much competition keeping everyone honest and, and competitive. Now when it comes to the very big roads and walkways and plenty of space that exists in the United States, Americans might feel a little claustrophobic in Portugal. When I first got here, the relative size of the roads and sidewalks and pretty much everywhere that you go uh, seems to be much smaller than in the United States. It feels a little bit more cramped in alleyways and people kind of just have created areas to get through uh, where they can. And this makes sense because Portugal is very, 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 very old and it makes sense that the infrastructure isn't quite there for how big everything was going to get. But a lot of people in the United States may find this cramped and a little bit hard to manage. It's not like Portuguese people have developed some type of zen-like calmness. They've just kind of learned to put up with it. Things in Portugal take a very, very long time sometimes. It almost moves at the speed of a turtle. And when you try to speed this process up, things just tend to get worse. And this pretty much goes for most of Southern Europe. It kind of is just what it is here and you kind of just have to get used to it or you will pull your hair out and be absolutely frustrated all of the time. So learn to slow yourself down and realize that things are just not going to happen at the same pace they would in the United States. And I think that a lot of Americans will have a problem dealing with this uh, and it seems to be one of the number one complaints that, that I hear here in Portugal. I'm curious what you guys thought about all of this. Uh, if you're an American that lives here in Portugal, let me know if you agree with me or if you think I'm just completely wrong and delusional and just pulling this stuff out of my butt. And if you're Portuguese, let me know how you feel about a stupid American trying to understand your guys' culture. If you want to see more videos about Portugal, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. This is Dave in Portugal, and we'll see you next time.